In this video, we'll create some AI animations like this, like Iman's last video. Not only that, we'll also add a cool average screen time counter. I will, of course, show you how to create this AI image, but also how to transform it and also the animation. But before I begin, I want to say one more thing, and that's thanks for the 10K subscribers. It has been wild, and I can't wait to see what happens in 2024. And before you skip, I'm going to give something away. You see, I want to give something back to you guys. I'm going to launch a masterclass, and I will teach you the whole process of editing but also how to get clients and how to optimize your workflow i will even send some clients through to this masterclass and of course this masterclass will cost money but to a few people i will give it completely for free again this is really to give something back to you guys the only thing you need to do is fill in your email in the description down below and i will email the winners for the people that didn't win i will still send a discount link once the masterclass has launched let's jump into the video first the image and you can do this in multiple AI image generators. I'm now using Midjourney. I also tested with DALI, but to be honest, it didn't really work. You see, I tested these two images. I'm not really happy with it. I think this one can still be really cool, but this one will be quite hard to animate. So going back to Discord, I saw this image and I think this is really cool. I just need to do a couple of things. I'm gonna uh, see if I can make this image a bit bigger and change the aspect ratio. You can actually change the aspect ratio already in uh, the mid journey bot by using this command. So a dash dash AR 16 by nine. And this is also the prompt I used a teenager sitting and drinking a soda bottle in a club cyberpunk style with a glow and cartoon hyper realistic. And of course, I will also put this prompt down in the description down below so you can just copy this over. Let's grab this image. So I'm just going to copy the image. I'll jump into Photoshop. I'll create a new document and I'll paste it in here. First, I'm going to expand the background by going to the crop tool, and just moving this over and making sure that the fill is set on generative expand. Let's see what happens. You'll get a prompt and you can just press generate. Hopefully it uses the same style. Sometimes it really goes off and it thinks of something else and then it's going to be too much creative. But this one I really like already. I'm gonna see if there's other options that are better. I think the second one is even better. So I'm gonna use the second one. And now we need to separate the foreground to the background because I'm gonna move all his hands and basically the bottle too. So I want a separate layer of our hands. I'm going to delete the bottom layer and then I'm going to select his hands. And the best way to do this is to just see which tool works for you. I really like the quick selection tool in a lot of ways. It's uh, perfect for certain objects. Certain objects are a bit hard with this. If this doesn't work for you, you can also use the object selection tool. You can always manually mask things too. See, now it's picking up his whole hoodie and then you can hold alt and then just remove it already then we'll press the mask icon and then we see how it works i think this should work now i'm just going to duplicate this layer by right clicking and pressing duplicate and the bottom one i'm going to delete this mask now since we're going to move this layer later on like this we need to make sure that the background under this is completely empty so we need to make sure that there's no bottle here and no hands here because we're going to move this. I'm going to make sure that this is back. I'm going to turn it off for now. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can also just select this and then right click, create a new layer, right, create a new layer and then go to content aware fill. I'm just going to zoom in onto this image, see what happens. Looks pretty good, but you can see the edges around it. And like last time, we can fix this by going to cancel and going to select and then modify expand and then maybe do a bit too much, maybe like five pixels. And then we'll go to again, edit content aware fill. We'll zoom in again, see what happens. And this looks pretty good. We can always clean it up later on. Just press OK and it will create a new layer for us anyway. We can delete this, then add our layer above it and then see what happens if we move this. So we're gonna just move this a bit, see how it looks. It looks pretty cool. I think we can work with this. Now, I also want to move him. So that's the last part that we're gonna do. Select the bottom layer. And for this, I'm gonna use the object selection. So the object selection tool works great for this. Just hover over and let's see if we can get him. And I think it has a bit of a hard time, but let's see what happens if we select. I think it works quite well. I'm just gonna mask it, see if it works. Yeah, it works really well, actually. I'm really happy with this. So I'm um, just gonna duplicate this again. And it's really not that hard, guys. Just delete the bottom layer, delete the bottom layer mask, select it again, same thing, select, modify, expand, 
maybe four or five pixels. And again, go to edit, content aware fill. Okay, remove your selection. And that's perfect. I'm really happy with this. Now to make things easier, you can also name things. So for example, I'm just gonna combine these two layers, merge layers, call this background. Now, before we continue, I'm actually gonna create the screen time window already, since it's actually quite easy to do in Photoshop. You see, sometimes I try to do everything in After Effects, but doing things in Photoshop, just importing the Photoshop file, it can be really easy. So how I would do it is just get a rectangle. I'm just gonna make sure it has rounded edges. So maybe 25 pixels. The fill I'll make black, the stroke I'll make white, and then we can adjust that later on. And I'm just gonna drag it, see what it looks like. Looks pretty cool to me. And we can always go to the fill and changing the color. So basically making it a bit light gray and then maybe adding a gradient over this. Actually, I might do this maybe to from black to a bit lighter gray. Okay. And then I can even change the degree. So it's a bit more like this. Change the opacity maybe a bit to 97 stroke. Same thing. Also can add a gradient by pressing the gradient button. However, I think the stroke does need to be a bit bigger because I can't see it at all. That is definitely too much. 20, no, that's too much. Uh, maybe five or maybe even three. Can just add the text that looks cool. Now for the grid, I would just use a normal rectangle, making sure that the fill is off. So turn the fill off. The stroke, one pixel, maybe make it two pixels. And the roundness, two zero. And then we just create a grid by, by selecting it like this. And then duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J on Windows or Mac. Press Command or Control T and then hold Shift and then we can move it down. Press Enter, duplicate this and we can just create a grid like this. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this down using the arrow keys, delete the bottom layer because we're just going to use this. Then maybe duplicate the bottom layer and move it down, making sure that it's perfectly aligned. Now select them all, turn down the opacity, something really low. Now we're just going to duplicate it one more time and then move this up, hold shift. Perfect. Now select all the layers and then right click, convert to smart object and right click rasterize layer. Now I can turn the opacity down to something really low, something like this, or we can even add a gradient to this if you want. We'll go to the text tool and we'll add Monday, Tuesday, select the text by hitting command a or control a decrease the font size and i'm gonna increase the spacing in between you can do that by going to the character layer you can move it out and space it accordingly i'm gonna make a dotted line by going to the line tool and you can just drag it out hold shift to make it straight like this and then in this option you can change it to a dotted line change the stroke mode to the top mode so it's inside and of course, the last part are the graphs itself. Really easy guys, just use again the rectangle tool. Make sure the fill is set on a gradient. You can choose your own gradient here and then make sure the stroke is set to off and make sure that there's a bit of roundness to it. Maybe four pixels, we can always adjust this later. And what I'm gonna do is gonna select the first three, right click, convert to smart object, right click, rasterize, and I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast Make sure that it only applies to the layer down below. So we click on this and I'm going to change the brightness uh, to really low. So it basically decreases the brightness of the gradient. And then the last part, I'm going to add a glow to this. So double click on it and then go to outer glow and make sure that the color is set to a color that's in the uh, gradient too. Press OK. Now let's save this Photoshop file and go into After Effects. Import your file by double clicking or dragging it in and making sure that the import as is set to composition retain layer sizes. Just press open and press editable layer styles. Press OK and it will create a composition. What I'm gonna do, I'm still gonna create a new composition because I want the 4K file. And then we can just select all these layers, paste them in here. And for now, I'm just going to select them, link them to the background, and I'm going to scale the background up and also move it a bit, something like this. I'm happy with this. Now, uh, for the screen time, I'm going to press toggle switches. I'm going to make this 3D. I'm going to press R for rotation, and we can just create a bit of depth to it by changing the Y rotation. Now, just make sure that the rasterize layer 
icon is off because otherwise it won't work making sure that it really looks like it's 3d now first we're going to animate the guy which i'm really excited about because i always love this process we can just click on the arm and i'm gonna go into the puppet position pin tool and we'll just create some pins uh, i would say one here and definitely one here because i basically i want to make sure that the pin for example when it's at the elbow that this point stays still and only the hand moves so let's see if it works we can already move it and see what this looks like that's great so i can already animate this i'm just gonna move a bit further for example one off second and i'm gonna move the bottle closer to his mouth uh, which i really think looks already quite cool let's see what this looks like yeah, that's great now i also want to move him because i think it just adds a bit of animation to it so we can click on the guy and we'll also add some puppet pin tools to him to his head and i'm gonna add one to his body because i basically want to move the head a bit and then lastly i also put one here making sure that this stays stable and actually i can show a trick you can even uh, decrease the density uh, if you don't have that much animation so let's say you put it on two it also makes the animation a bit more quick and also a bit more easy there will also be less movement in the uh, in the image so we can move him for example a bit over and then i'm just gonna move him to the back now that's really cool and i can always select both layers press u to see all keyframes and then select the keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease and we can even select them and ease them in so it really goes maybe a bit quick in the beginning but then slows down at the end to make a really smooth animation now of course we can add some elements for example in the inspiration you can see some dna twisting now this is really easy guys you can just download dna footage and overlay it but i would definitely suggest to do that but also things like fire sparks to create more depth to the image for now, I'm going to focus on animating the screen time. First, I'm just going to press P for position and I'm going to keyframe the position. Move this out, move this up and right click on the keyframe assistant easy ease. And we'll go to the graph tool and really make it smooth. Let's see what this looks like. I like that. I like that a lot. And then I'm just going to double click on the screen time. And what we want is we want this number to count up. Now I want this number to count up and unfortunately we can't do that with the current layer since it's a Photoshop layer. So we have to add a text layer to it. So just press the text tool, type uh, hours. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. Then open this, then open the text and alt click on the stopwatch and then just paste the expression that will also be in the description down below. Then click on the layer and we'll go to our effects panel and we'll add a slider control. Now I really like this because it makes it simple and you can always replicate this effect. So now you can just keyframe the slider because what it will do, it will count the number up. Just make sure that your font is gonna be the same. I think we use Montserrat medium. I'm gonna decrease the size and I'm gonna move it over. Now just click on the stopwatch, go to the beginning, maybe set it on six and then end it on 12. Press U, right click it, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Open the graph editor and then you can even ease this in by holding shift. So the last numbers will go a bit slower basically. Now just right click, layer cells, outer glow, go into your outer glow and increase the size. And let's turn on the 12 hours again and change the color to white. And we're just gonna mask the hours. Let's see what this looks like. I think it looks really cool. I think we can change the opacity of the glow a bit to match the other one. I'm really happy with this. It looks really cool. And then the only thing we have to do is animate this graph. Now, this is super simple. I would just duplicate this and go to toggle switch modes. Make sure that the alpha mat is the top mat. And then we'll just press P for position. And I'm just going to keyframe it in. So we'll go to the around the first layer. I'm going to move it to the bottom right click the last keyframe easy ease and you will get something like this you can even go to the graph editor changing our graph type to edit speed graph and then select the last keyframe move it in see it again amazing now if you add a couple elements which are also in the asset pack you will get something like this and as you can see it's a really cool effect something you can do with any prompt so really be creative let me know what you want to see more and don't forget to subscribe Again, thanks for the 10K subscribers. I'm really happy with that. And I'll see you next time. Bye.